J. Harold Smith, the late Southern Baptist evangelist, preached a sermon multiple times called God's Three Deadlines. I've listened to uh, a, a number of them and I've found some contradictions. But I believe this man is telling the truth to the best of his ability. He was a Southern Baptist evangelist, holy man of God. He believed in revelations where it says, And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So, it is reasonable to believe that he's telling the truth when he preaches. Can you be 100% sure? Well, can we be 100% sure of anything if without all of that evidence? Can we be 100% sure that Matt Dillon Honey was one the famed atheist on YouTube, militant atheist, anti-theist? Can we believe what he says when he says he was once a fundamentalist preacher until he deconverted? Where's the evidence? But anyways, I wish this man J. Harold Smith was still alive. I would confront him with I would kindly confront him with what I'm showing you and ask him, now what, now that you know all the facts, now that you've heard all that you have said, what, re what really happened? Step by step, what really happened? Why, why did you say this in this sermon and contradict what you said in another sermon? And maybe if I could, maybe if I could do this, I could use his way of thinking to reverse engineer the contradictions in the gospel accounts. For example, the one where Jesus, where the woman was anointing his feet with her tears at Simon the leper's house. But in the gospel of John, it was at Martha and Mary's house. Maybe I could get to the bottom of this. If I could get to the bottom of J. Harold Smith's contradictions and his retellings of his sermon. Man, I wish the man was still alive, but he died in 2001. I was holding a revival meeting in a little Georgia town in a wonderful little church. I had preached on Thursday night. I do not remember what the sermon was. It was not this message. But as I gave the invitation, 25 or 30 people had walked down the aisle, and I saw a young man stand up on the very back pew of the church and begin to look over the audience. He was standing up on the seat part of the pew. I was impressed by the Holy Spirit to go back and speak to him. I went back and before he knew I was on my way, I was right in front of him and I looked up into his face and I said, young man, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you saved? And before I could utter another word, he turned on me like a vicious animal and he said, listen here, J. Harold Smith, I did not come here to hear you preach. No, I'm not saved. And for your information, I do not want to be saved. I came here tonight to find a couple of girls to go to a dance and as soon as I can locate them, we can have our space. God is my witness, as kindly as I could say it. I said, son, I believe that the Holy Ghost sent me back here, the Holy Spirit sent me back here to speak to you about your soul. He cut me off again. He said, I told you, sir, that I did not come here to hear you preach. I told you a moment ago that I was not saved and that I did not want to be saved. I told you that I came here to get a couple of girls to go to a dance. He said, now you and the Holy Ghost both go to hell. As soon as he said it, I never had such an impression to get away from a man in my life. I felt that I was in the presence of a mad dog, a rattlesnake, and I backed off from him. And I said, son, son, I believe you've blasphemed against God's Holy Spirit. He pulled up his shoulders and said, oh, yeah. I did not say another word. I dismissed that service. 
he got those two girls, he and his friend, and went to that dance hall. At five minutes of 12, according to his buddy, they stepped out on the little porch of that dance hall to take a drink of liquor and to smoke a cigarette. They lit their cigarette and his buddy said, I took a drink out of the flask and I reached across the little porch to hand it to him and he reached out to take it before he could touch the flask. He folded up like a jackknife, began to scream like a panther, fell on that little old porch. The orchestra stopped playing, the dancers stopped dancing. They called for Dr. Mays. Dr. Mays told me, he said, Preacher, I got to that dance hall about 5 after 1 a.m. And as I walked in and saw that young man stretched out on the dance hall floor, two things I was aware of simultaneously. Number one, that was the young man that was standing on that pew back of me in the service. And second, that he was a corpse. Before I ever touched him, I knew he was dead. And he said, if I ever examined him, I examined a body to write on the death certificate the cause of death, I examined him, and finally, I had to write on the death certificate the cause of death unknown. But he said, if I'd have put on there what I know I ought to put on there, I'd have put on there God killed him. I was holding a revival meeting in South Carolina in a, in a little church by the name of Beaver Dam Baptist Church. On a Thursday night, I preached. I do not remember what it was. It wasn't this sermon. And the church had three little sections in it, just like this, right, right these three sections here. And when I started giving the invitation, on the back row, on the back seat, I saw a young man stand up on the, on the seat part, and that put his head and shoulders above everybody else. And we were giving the invitation. And he began to look around with that congregation, and God impressed me to go back and speak to him. So I walked off the platform. We had had 20 or 25 people to come forward. And I walked off the platform, and I was right in front of him before he ever knew that I was coming down the aisle. I looked up at his face, and I said, Young man, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? And before I could get any further, he said, No, I'm not saved. He said, for your information, J. Harold Smith, we did not come here to hear you preach tonight. We came here to pick up a couple of girls that go to a dance, and as soon as we can locate them, you can have our space. God is my witness. As kindly as I could say it, I said, son, I really believe the Holy Ghost impressed me to come back, and that's as far as I got. He said, I told you, sir, that I did not come here to hear you preach. I told you that I didn't want to be saved. I told you that we came here to get a couple of girls to go to a dance, and as soon as we can locate them, you can have our space. He said, and now, you and the Holy Ghost both go to hell. In all of my ministry, till this very night, when I just repeat that, cold chills run over my body. And I, I begin to back off from him like I would a rattlesnake. And I didn't say another word until I got back to the pulpit. And I said, folk, I do not know who that young man is standing on that pew, but he just stepped over God's deadline. He just blasphemed against God's spirit, and God signed his death warrant, and God's going to kill him. He pulled up his hands and shoulders just like this, and out loud said, oh, yeah? I made no response. He got those two girls, drove them about five miles to that dance hall. He and his buddy, according to his buddy, at about five minutes or twelve that night, stepped up on the little old porch of that dance hall to smoke a cigarette and to take a drink of liquor. His buddy said, we lit our cigarettes. I had the flask. I took a drink. And then I, after I'd taken a drink, I started to hand it over to him, and he reached out to take it, but he never touched it. He folded up like a jackknife, fell on that little old dance hall porch, and began to scream like a panther. The orchestra stopped playing, and the dancers stopped dancing, and they came out and picked him up and carried him in and put him on the dance hall floor and sent for Dr. Mays. Dr. Mays said he got to that dance hall about 1.15 a.m. He said when he walked in and saw that boy lying on the floor, he was aware of two things simultaneously. Number one, that was the boy that was sitting or standing on that pew back of him in the service that night. And he said before I ever touched him, I knew he was a corpse. He said if I ever examined anybody with all of the skill that I had, as a doctor, I examined him, and I finally wrote on the death the certificate, the cause of death unknown. He said, if I'd have put on that preacher, what I know what to put on there, I'd have put on that God killed him. I never will forget as long as I live, when I was in a revival meeting, 
in a little country church down in the lower part of South Carolina. I do not remember that night what I preached about or on the theme or the subject. But when I was giving the invitation, I saw a young man stand up on the very back row in the pew and begin to look out over that congregation. I turned and walked down the aisle of the church on the wall side until I was right in front of him. I looked up into his face and I said to him, young man, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior? He said, no, sir. No, sir, I do not know the Lord. And he said, I didn't come here to get saved. I didn't come here to hear you preach. I came here to get a couple of girls to go to a dance. And, sir, as soon as I can locate them, you can have our space. I said, young man, the Lord sent me back here. The Holy Spirit sent me back here to speak to you about your soul. He said, you and the Holy Ghost both go to hell. God said, get away from him. Don't speak another word to him. He's blasphemed against my spirit, and I'm going to kill him. I turned and walked back to that platform, and I said, Folk, do you see that boy that's standing yonder on that pew? Everybody turned around and looked. I said, I do not know who he is. I do not know his name. But he just blasphemed against God's Holy Spirit, and God spoke to my heart and said he was going to kill him. I'll never forget it. The boy pulled his hands up like that and out loud said, Oh, yeah? I dismissed the services about 9.15. He got the two girls and they went to a little dance hall about five miles away. About five minutes till 12 that night, he stepped out on the little porch in front of that dance hall, he and his buddy, to smoke a cigarette and to take a drink. When they had lit their cigarettes and his buddy had taken a drink out of the flask, he turned, started to hand it over to his friend. And that boy folded up like a jackknife fell on that porch and began to scream like a panther. And before they could stop the orchestra and get out to pick him up, he was a corpse. They sent, sent for the medical doctor in that area. And when that doctor arrived, he said, I was three seats in front of him tonight. I saw him and I heard him when he said what he had to say. That's the boy tonight, the preacher Smith said God was going to kill in less than three hours. He was in hell. You say, well, preacher, it would, just have, it would have happened anyway. I don't believe it. I never will forget as long as I live when I was in a revival meeting in a little country church down in the lower part of South Carolina. I do not remember that night what I preached about or on the theme or the subject. But when I was giving the invitation, I saw a young man stand up on the very back row in the pew and begin to look out over that congregation. I turned and walked down the aisle of the church on the wall side until I was right in front of him. I looked up into his face and I said to him, young man, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior? He said, no, sir. No, sir, I do not know the Lord. And he said, I didn't come here to get saved. I didn't come here to hear you preach. I came here to get a couple of girls to go to a dance. And, sir, as soon as I can locate them, you can have our space. I said, young man, the Lord sent me back here. The Holy Spirit sent me back here to speak to you about your soul. He said, you and the Holy Ghost both go to hell. God said, get away from him. Don't speak another word to him. He's blasphemed against my spirit, and I'm going to kill him. I turned and walked back to that platform and I said, Folk, do you see that boy that's standing yonder on that pew? Everybody turned around and looked. I said, I do not know who he is. I do not know his name. But he just blasphemed against God's Holy Spirit. And God spoke to my heart and said he was going to kill him. I never forget it. The boy pulled his hands up like that and out loud said, Oh, yeah? I dismissed the services about 9.15. He got the two girls and they went to a little dance hall about five miles away. About five minutes till 12 that night, he stepped out on the little porch in front of that dance hall, he and his buddy, to smoke a cigarette and to take a drink. When they had lit their cigarettes and his buddy had taken a drink out of the flask, he turned, started to hand it over to his friend. And that boy folded up like a jackknife, fell on that porch and began to scream like a panther. And before they could stop the orchestra and get out to pick him up, he was a corpse. 
They send, send for the medical doctor in that area. And when that doctor arrived, he said, I was three seats in front of him tonight. I saw him and I heard him when he said what he had to say. That's the boy tonight, the preacher Smith said God was going to kill in less than three hours. He was in hell. You say, well, preacher, it would just have, it would have happened anyway. I don't believe it. I was holding revival. me, but instead you stood up. You spit me out, you keep me down. I hate your death, but love me. They said to kill my soul. They ripped my heart from my chest. Let me know I'm in the grave. Should know I never stay. Very deep in the neck. See more sorrow than me. Now watch me fight. And all uh, it pisses it it makes me pisses me off. It makes me want to see these atheists get cancer when they say, "Oh, this story didn't happen." Instead of facing head on, what happens scientifically because it the story did happen. It bothers me because 